So you feel that your playing is not so good, but you just have no idea what the issue exactly is. It's really frustrating, but believe me, it happens with the best of us either. So today I'm going to be showing you a few tricks and tips how to organize your thoughts about your playing better and uh, how to be able to catch your mistake and how to be able to define the issue so you will be able to solve them too. So without further ado, let's get right into it. So my first advice is to don't get fooled by the large amount of data because if you look at your playing as you know as a big hole it it's just one big chaos and you won't be able to structure it really well so you will just get confused and I don't know disappointed frustrated demotivated so it's more likely that you just give up give it up without uh, even trying to solve the problem instead you should just slice the piece you are working on into smaller shorter sections and elements so it will be much easier to you know to to understand what's happening what's going on and uh, you can slice it up by technique so for example you can have uh, uh, different sections for all the slurs for all the skills or for all the arpeggio kind of stuff but I always like to start thinking from a musical aspect even when I have a technical issue I, I start thinking from a musical aspect so when I slice up a longer piece into smaller sections, I try to find small shorter elements that make sense musically. So for example, let's take a look at Lagrima and especially at the first part, the A part. Um, you have, for example, the first two bars make sense by themselves and you repeat them, so that's a 2 plus 2 and then you will have a 4, four measure long part one, two, three, four, yes, it's four, four measured uh, long part, which also makes sense. So you have two plus two plus four, and that will give you three different little sections, three elements, and uh, now you have a structured first part for Lagrima. So as I said, I prefer to divide the music into shorter elements by thinking from this musical aspect, because it gives me some space for my next tip, which is to walk yourself through on a timeline. And if you already divided the music into these elements, these uh, musical little parts and sections, uh, that will help you a lot. So, for example, let's say you play the piece and you just feel you screwed it up entirely and the whole piece was, was really bad, but I'm pretty sure this is not what happened. Probably there were some parts which was really unsuccessful and you feel bad about them and uh, that caused the feeling that you played badly the entire piece but you pr probably just played a few parts badly and the other parts were just fine if you are able to walk yourself through on the timeline you can find where exactly you have the problem you can find out for example that your i don't know your bar chord body in this uh, fourth section if we if we uh, stay at the example of, of lagrima so for example, your bar chord was, was really uh, messy. <laughs> it didn't sound really well. Uh, so what you need to do is to work on that little section, that short musical section. You don't have to start playing from the beginning because the first two bars was great. Then the next two bars was, were great too. But then you have this bar chord and that was unsuccessful. So the only thing you need to work on is that third section. You get my meaning, right? If this timeline thing is, is a bit more difficult for you, then I would advise you to record yourself, record your playing as uh, often as possible, because, you know, if you are watching your recording, if you, if you are listening to your own recording, you will be able to catch the mistakes uh, more easily, and you just have to highlight them or, you know, circle them in the sheet music, and then you will know, if, if you identify the spot, you will know which uh, musical section, you know, from the first tip, which musical section contains that, uh, that mistake. So you have to work on only that little section. Recordings are the most cruel, but still honest supervisors you can ever have in your life, because it really shows the relations between your inputs and outputs. So it really shows if uh, your input gives the output of your expectations or 
if your input really what you think it is or maybe you are doing something completely different than what you thought or maybe if your output is not what you like then is the input right at all so when you have a spot you are really unhappy with you just have to take a very very close look at what you are doing and uh, what's the result of it so when you find a weak spot or weak weak part uh, there are tons of categories you can use as a checklist so you can ask the right questions about your input and they can help you to identify what exactly is going on so Here's a little guide. I usually like to have three big categories, which contains lots of smaller, uh, smaller ones, smaller questions. So my first category would be technique, technique related questions. Then the next is sound production. And the third one is style or music related questions. And you will see how these categories overlap a little bit, but uh, you know, this is just how music works. Uh, everything is connected to everything. So under technique, you need to ask if it's a right or a left hand related problem. If it's a left hand related problem, you should check if your fingering is right for that part, or I don't know, if you hear some squeaky noises, and if you do, maybe check your shifting, maybe that's, that's the problem, it's not optimal. Also, I don't know, check your ornaments, if they are messy or dirty, maybe your, your slurs are not so accurate, you need to work on those, and things like that. And if it's a right hand related question or problem, mm, you should check your position, your angles, if it's good, if it's optimal. You need to check your nails, you know, the shape of your nail, if it's right for, for your playing and things like that. And in just general, you also need to ask uh, if the synchronization between your two hands is right, because maybe your right hand is good as it is, maybe your left hand works really well, but the synchronization is not so good. And also you need to ask, maybe if um, if you are using too much tension or do you release the tension during your playing or do you just use way too much strength to play that part and you just get tired before i present the next two categories if you think this video is helpful make sure to like it and uh, please subscribe on my channel that would help me a lot and also please consider supporting my work on patreon for some bonus content thanks a lot so under sound production i check the shape of my nail and also maybe the shape is right but the surface is not mirror smooth so i have to i have to smoothen my nails and uh, maybe the shape and the surface is right still but you you experience this harsh sound so also your right hand picking technique can cause bad sound production so you, if in, in this case you need to work on that and then style style is a little bit deep water but here are just a few examples what you can ask about your about your style about the musicality of your playing for example uh, do you play the right rhythm and uh, do you keep a consistent tempo or maybe you are slowing down on the more difficult parts and you play faster the easy parts. Make sure you have the consistent tempo during the whole piece. And also, um, do you want to play a melody line legato or do you want to articulate it? And if you want to articulate, are you consistent with it? Make sure to be very, very consistent in your articulations. Also, maybe how much rubato do you want to allow yourself and uh, do you play characters and is your is your playing colorful or is it just flat do you freeze the music or you just play one long chaos from the beginning till the end so these are the kind of questions you can ask under style and music. So dividing the piece into smaller sections, walking yourself through on the timeline, recording yourself, yourself and asking the right questions are really helpful to identify the issue if you already have one. But you also can prevent the issue by practicing mindfully and by being present on each and every note you play. And I know <laughs> it's really hard to focus sometimes, especially if you are really tired and if you are, I don't know, if you are practicing after work or at the evening, but believe me, uh, brainless practice is even worse than no practice at all because you develop many bad habits 
which will be really get really difficult to get rid of in the future. So don't turn on autopilot mode when you are practicing. Don't watch TV, don't listen to podcasts and don't let let your thoughts to shift away to somewhere else. So when you are practicing, you need to practice. You need to be present and you need to be there. Okay, now I can fully confirm that if you are following these steps, if you are following these tips, you will be able to identify any issues in your playing. But what if your tone was never really good? Or what if, for example, your right hand picking was never really confident? How to fix that all of a sudden? Because identifying an issue is one thing, but solving a problem is another one, right? Maybe. But maybe you don't even have the right tools to play a certain part well. And you know what? That's totally fine. That's fine. Because that's just part of the learning process. But still, I know it's frustrating. <laughs> it is. So um, if you want, if you want me to, I can help with that because I have this full playlist for uh, specialized for classical guitarists where I target certain technical issues, certain techniques, and I give some advices and some tips how to fix certain issues. So check it out, it's somewhere here. And otherwise, thanks for watching. Make sure to like and subscribe, and see you next time. Bye.